Hey, it's William Christopher Ford, and welcome to this edition of 52 Masters. In this episode, we are doing Muay Thai, the art of eight limbs, with my good friend, crew, Phil Aslaxon. So that being said, let's get to training. I am 51 years old. I've been a practitioner of Okinawan Shodin Ryu Karate since I was seven. There were some who would call me a master. I assure you, I am not. I believe that the true expert is someone who still has a student's heart and a beginner's mind. This year, to celebrate turning 52, I'm setting out to learn from 52 other disciplines, each from its own master. Some things I've tried before, others, I'm a first-day beginner, like anyone else. 52 weeks, 52 new skills. I'm William Christopher Ford, and this is 52 Masters. So, um, Sensei, why don't you just warm up with a little bit of shadow boxing? Okay. Uh, hands only right now. Just kind of move it around. Got hooks, uppercuts, overhands. Try to just like really relax more. You think just slowly. Nice. Nice. Okay, add in elbows. As you know, uh, Thai boxing is known as the art of eight limbs, meaning two hands, two elbows, two knees, and two shins. So these are mostly utilized in the offensive mode, okay? We do have a bunch of defensive stuff, but today we'll probably focus more on that. So let's break down just the hands for now. Okay. So if we just get in a regular stance here, we notice that our arms are perpendicular to the ground. Some people do this, now you're opening up more your ribs to get hit. So you want to keep everything kind of relaxed here. So on this one, when we throw a straight, a straight punch thrown off the lead is a jab. If I'm here, a straight punch is a jab because it's thrown off the lead. So here I am. I'm going to go ahead and slip the punch that would be coming in. And I would have put like a 70-30 weight distribution here and corkscrew the jab in. This comes back again. So it doesn't go here and out. You just come slip and go. Now, when I go to throw my cross, I'm just going to switch my weight now to the lead. I'm going to keep my shoulder up. Keep this hand higher on here. So you want to see this in your peripheral. If you can't see this, the opponent's fist will see your face. <laughs> okay. So here we are. So just to keep it really relaxed and breaking it down to the lowest common denominator. One, two. Okay. Now we're not fully extending because now we're hyper extending. Mm -hmm. And this is all like stuff you already know. But we're just going over this just to really work the basics. Sure. Okay, so you got one, two, one, two. Good. Shifting your weight. This is also getting out of the way for the punch. Ah. Right? So you're getting out of the way, the punch is coming in, I'm taking on the inside line. I'm taking out of the way of a jab and I'm cutting it on the inside. Okay? So a little higher with your left. Okay? So one, two. Now, you know too that you don't want to slow your speed down. So you want to have like zero, 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 100, zero, zero, zero. So your punch is not, some people muscle it through the air mm. and it's more of a push than a punch. Okay. Okay. So you got one, two, one, two, 
Everything's relaxed. Right. Good. Relaxing. One, two. Okay. Nice. Try to relax even more. Good. Okay, very nice. So we're going to go through like one, two, nine commonly used elbows in Thai boxing. Okay. So let's go with this first one here. One. Okay, horizontal elbow, and come back off the lead, same thing. So one, two. Now, these are slicing elbows. By slicing, I mean we're not, it's not like hitting here, it's hitting and slicing through with this part of the arm. It's designed to cut the skin. One, two, okay, one. Now, why is my hand up here? Because if I'm close enough to elbow you, you're close enough to elbow me. So I want to have something here, just in case. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, sir. So the second one will look as a, a upward 45, basically, or what they call a number two elbow here. So let it like you're punching this ear. This in itself becomes a block. Huh. Right? Yes. So one, four, two. Okay? Now, the bow ham need to be up. One, two. And again, draw any energy up from the floor. The smaller you make this, the stronger it is. This is a little less bone. There's a little more bone. So this will cut more and it has a little more mass to it. Mm. Yes, sir. So now, let's tap, make the opposite. I'm slicking my hair back. This is what I do every morning. <laughs> Bring it down. Here. Okay. So. Or lead. Noble. One, two. So stand a little closer now. And I want to use my left. Same thing. Now I got this one. Mm. Okay. So again, quick switch left. Very little motion. Pretty good power. And but the key is to relax. That's the main thing. So whether I'm out here, I don't want to go. I'm gonna to try to get there. Mm. Just real relax. Here. Weight's coming forward. Here, coming forward. Mm. Okay. We're leaning away, and then and then switch stepping forward. Leaning away. Okay. That's it. Because the whole thing is, your opponent doesn't really know. It, it basically, if I'm driving you back, it, oh, and then I can follow you up with a knee as you're going back. So that's kind of the whole principle of it. We're just we're just isolating the techniques at this point. Okay. Let's see a quick switch uh, or just a regular switch on the lead and the same things. So now you're closer. See so now here. Now I'm here and you want to hit me with your lead. So, all it is is, do what I'm doing. I'm really just switching my foot position. Right. Okay? One move, and go. Much better. Nice. Okay, again, sure. the tie kick is not so much, it, it snaps a little bit at the very end, but it's more about the rotation. Um, and the tie stance, we don't, we don't stand like this, because now we're trying to kick around this leg. 
okay? What you want to do is keep it a little open. So what I do is like here, 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 right? So now I'm a little bit more open with my hips, the target. Now, if you're going to do a single direct attack, this is where you want to power up and throw your arm. If I'm going to attack by combination, I will be closer, so I want to keep my hands up when I throw the tight kick, okay? So when I go relax, just, okay? That's all I'm doing. Relax. Keep my hands up, right here, just like that. This is, like this, is like, this is like I'm generating power by throwing this. And I want to keep my weight slightly forward. I don't want to tight, I don't want to lean back. Unless you're trying to kick the head and you don't have flexibility. Okay? So this is a... Uh, turn your hip over more. All right. So your resting position, if you, if you throw your, your kick here, place it. Now, this, good, here, relax, here, broken thumb, not broken thumb, uh, not broken thumb, broken thumb, broken thumb. Broken thumb. <laughs> okay, so relax even more, good, drink a lot of coffee, sir, yes, sir, okay, of course, <laughs> good rotation through a nice kick. Same thing, you want to just be more relaxed here. Have that shoulder coming forward, have that energy coming forward. Okay. Turn the hip over a little bit more in your right. I mean your left. <coughs> Try a little more. Rotate more in your support leg. This is a little bit more difficult. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I, I, you gotta relax. But when I sh when I switch, I don't even have to switch. I could just go from here and throw it from there. But it's easier to switch. But the key is you gotta turn your hip over. Right. Otherwise, it's just not gonna flow right. It's gonna you're fighting yourself. Okay. Go ahead. Now you're, what we're doing is we're flowing into ranges. That's the whole thing about. Thai boxing has it's really the, there's just three ranges of combat really, uh, and they close really fast. That's I like the transition from the kicks to the knees to the elbows. It's like really really quick. Okay, so that's what these drills are designed for. Pad work is to is to know your ranges, flow in and out of your ranges. So the first one's going to be I'm going to go one, two, three, elbow, knee. Okay, I'll walk you through it. So, we got switch kick, cross, hook, knee, okay, elbow, good, and kick. Now, if I'm too close, extend this hand, push me off. Okay, this is for your training partner, but for the street, I'm gonna be face. Because what I do is I get the face going backwards, this opens up the low line, mm. right? This is for training, this one, face, and all this is open. So one, kick, cross, hook, knee, elbow, hook, kick. Okay. Now you can even change that up too. You can go knee or elbow then. Knee. So you can go kick, cross, hook, elbow, knee, kick. Cross. Hook. Elbow. Knee. Cross. 
Okay, so we're back after that fantastic workout. I'm here with my friend, Crew Phil Aslaxon. You know, and I have to apologize to you because for years I, I pronounced your name Alaskan. You, and wouldn't, you wouldn't be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> we call but a lot of things. Phil Aslaxon, is, is that's the correct pronunciation? Oh, uh, yeah, it's close. Okay, <laughs> and you know what? I've known you like forever because when I first met you, you were actually teaching out of Jerry Jackson's gymnastics schools at the uh, Torrance Gymnastics correct. School. And I was teaching, I had one student, I was teaching karate over there, and her name was a little Samoan girl named Jerish. And, and I haven't seen her in you know, a long, long time. She's probably a grown woman now, has her own family now. Right. But that's when I first met you, and you were teaching uh, out of the gymnastics school, and you had just come off of working uh, off of uh, Master and Commander with uh, Russell Crowe at that time. You were still pretty active in stunts at that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've, you know, we're obviously still friends, and it's really a, a great pleasure to be training with you. No, thank you. I, I appreciate it, and I feel the same way about you. <laughs> thank you. Um, the workout was really great. I, I had a great time. It was a great workout. And the elbows and the knees, I just love. It's, it's very great for combat sports, but also very practical for the street. Um, I love the head movement, I love the footwork, uh, the switch stepping, you know, and, and I was honestly having a little bit of a challenge with some of it, you know, it's, um, you know, from a, kar a karate perspective, it's just done a little bit differently sometimes. And so when you're so used to doing something, you know, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's like, okay, you know what, forget about the way I've done it. Let me, let me try this new way. But it's just a beautiful art. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I really enjoy it as well. Mm -hmm. I started doing it, uh, Thai boxing in 91. Mm. At the Inasanto Academy, yeah, <clears throat> Guru Dan was my first teacher. Okay, so that's you know, and, and there there's a a lot of different systems that I never even heard of. Yeah, when I when I first got there, but I kind of gravitated towards the Kali and the, mm. the Silat and uh, the Muay Thai for the most part. So Master Chai, um, Sirichai, Sir, Sirichai, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> his title is Arjan, 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 Arjan Chai. He was uh, Guru Dan's. And in is Guru Dan's Muay Thai instructor, and he also became yours. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting story how okay. that happened. Uh, well, I used to go to all the workshops. Mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, um, that um, Ajahn Chai was teaching. I would always go to those workshops, mm. and eventually, you know, he kind of noticed me, mm. uh, and then he invited me to his house one day. Mm. So I'm like, oh, cool! I'm, I get to go to Master Chai's house. Mm. So when I went to his house, we walked through his living room and into the garage. And then he walks me over to his garage door and there's a wooden frame. Mm. And I said, oh, cool. And he's, he had me do an el uh, our knee. So I go to his knee position and I'm resting my knee on the wood, the door, and he would correct my form. No, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. So he would do this. Um, and I'm like, okay, I'm getting this shoulder forward, twisting, dropping hand, protecting, chin down. And then he would disappear. Mm. He's gone for like 15 minutes. Mm. So I'm like, I don't dare stop. Yeah. You know, because I know he's somewhere, he's, he's watching. So I hear an espresso machine, and then he comes out and he's drinking some espresso and he kind of walks over and he's like, no sir. Then you come over and correct it. And you kind of take a sip and you look and then he disappear again. Uh -huh. And it's, I, I, it might have, it probably was basically about 40 to, minutes to an hour, but it, it seemed like maybe three or four hours. <laughs> <laughs> he come out and he look, I can't, so my knee's getting a little raw on yeah. the wood. So he, he finally comes out and he says, uh, that's the one. Mm. And then from that time on, uh, for the, the next couple of years, I was able to train one on one with him, mm. which was we'd go down to Torrance Beach and go jogging and then would work some techniques yeah. down there. So that was like a really magical time mm. for me. What's he like as a person? I've, I've, I, don't have the, I haven't had the honor of meeting him yet, but I've heard so much about him. Well, the first time I worked with him, I was petrified because mm. it was the Inosanto Academy workshop. Yeah. And I'm watching him, he's, he's, he's scary. Yeah. So. I go up there and I must have been stiff and scared, and I was. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, oh God, he's gonna knock me out. <laughs> and he says, he, you know, he's looking like this, and he leans to me real close, and he goes, so just pretend it's you and me working out. Mm. And all of a sudden, I was able to relax. Mm. He's got a heart of gold. Mm. He really does. He's a, a pretty a, amazing guy, mm -hmm. as gifted as he is, mm -hmm. um, but he's just a genuine human being and a, and a good yeah. human. You know, um, most of the Thai people I've met are just super warm. Yeah. Like, Friendly, friendly people, and amazing fighters. You know, you, you think you get them in the ring, and it's just like, no, nah, I don't want to fight this guy. And they don't get you know? tired. Yeah. <laughs> so I, you know, b building on what you said, I, I heard a story that Guru Dan in Osanto went to Master Chai's house, 
and he had him working a uh, kick in the bag and he disappeared like he <laughs> had a phone call <laughs> and he was gone i guess for like i don't know an hour or two hours or yeah. whatever it was and you know guru dan is like well just keep going and you Mas don't dare stop master jay comes back and the, you know guru dan is sitting there in a pool of sweat but he's still going at it and I'm just going wow well, you know mm -hmm. the old kung fu, when you go to practice uh, kung fu, you go to the studio and they, they put you in a horse stance. Yeah. And then they just walk away. <laughs> they go make a, a bologna sandwich or whatever, come back yeah. half an hour later, and your legs are like this, you're shaking. And, and if, if you stood up and you weren't doing that, mm -hmm. you didn't get to train. Yeah. So the same kind of thing. I think the same mentality. Well, there's this, there's this meme going around. I think I shared it. It's, uh, oh, complaining about horse dance? Obviously, you need more horse dance, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And I posted that, and I got a lot of likes on that one, especially from you know the uh, uh, my my old school traditional friends. Right. They're like going, "Yeah, that's 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 the old school way, man." You know, and you know the thing about fundamentals is, yes, it starts with the word fun, F-U-N, and fundamentals are rarely fun, you know, that's but right. they are so essential because they know they not only work your body, but you know I think the other thing is it develops your strong mind. So if right. you can sit in your horse stance for 30 minutes or whatever it is, you know, um, then it's like, well, you can do anything. You yeah, because your mind's somewhere else. Yes. If you put it on, my legs hurt, then your legs hurt. Yeah. And then you start focusing on that and that's all you can focus on and yes. then you can't do it no more. For sure, for sure. Now you, um, you and I have similar background because you know I'm a Shorinru stylist, Shorinru Karate, Okinawan Karate. That was my original style. It's still the style that I teach but you know I like to say that I am influenced and inspired by Shorinru but I am not limited by it. It's not certainly not the only art that I study and it's certainly not the, the be all and end all but what it has done is given me a wonderful foundation from which I can go and, and look at other forms of movement, forms of self-defense. But you were in Okinawa because you were in the Air Force, correct? Uh, correct. And you also studied Shorinru. Yeah, I did. Um, I studied off base. There's a school there, mm. and uh, it's very traditional, mm -hmm. uh, Akiwar and all this stuff. Okay. But w w the thing was, what's, what I really liked about it is it was a discipline. Mm. Like you show up one minute late, say class was seven o'clock, you show up seven o one, you don't go, you don't just go onto the floor. You wait. You wait till that instructor decides he wants to bow you onto the floor then then and only then if you roll into the parking lot five minutes late just roll right on back out and come back another day you're not coming in mm -hmm. so they're not going to let you train yeah so that's kind of like it was a discipline be there everyone else can show up on time you can too mm. uh, yeah. we used to like take the uh, towel the lower belts would yeah. push a towel along the floors yeah everybody everybody cleans mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. yeah clean the gym up after and yeah so i kind of i think that was kind of cool how long did you do that for um, I was there for three years, huh. so I trained for three years. What, what do you know, there's several branches, as you know, of Shorin Ru. Which mm -hmm. uh, branch, do you remember what it was? This is uh, Kenshin Khan, hmm. uh, uh, Fuchi, uh, Fusi, uh, Grandmaster Fusi. Okay, got it. Yeah, he got was, it. he was, uh, I, I trained with his son, uh, Isao Kisei. Okay. And Fusei Kisei was his dad. Got it, got so. it. And I think now he's running the show. Mm. I'm not sure if his dad's still around. Okay. But, uh, and then... You came back to the States, and then how long was it before you found the Inosanto Academy? I rotated back, and it, it was a couple of years mm. when I just was trying to save up money, because that was like one of my goals, mm -hmm. was to train with Dan Inosanto. I'm mm. like, Dan Inosanto, man, I used to read all the books and, you know, Inside Kung Fu, and yeah. Black Belt, and all this. So I ended up uh, going to, going to the, uh, California. I had 500 bucks in my pocket, mm. no job, and I just showed up at the Academy, and mm. <clears throat> they accepted me. Uh, and I remember the first time uh, I was there, it, it wasn't a big school and all that. It was an alley with a um, storage facility. Mm. That was the school. Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't know where it was. I had to ask people where it was because there's mm. no signs or anything. Wow. So I found it. I just I see there's a bunch of students standing out in the alley and I'm like, yeah. it's gotta be it. So I, yeah, yeah. I go there and I'm standing there and his van rolls up and out jumps Dan Inosanto and I'm like, oh my God. Wow. And I'm standing next to Dan Inosanto. Yeah. Do you know, yeah. it's like, it was yeah. kind of surreal at the time. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, that must have been like a, as they say in Hawaii, it's a chicken skin moment yeah. where you get the goosebumps. Yeah, you know? it was, wow. it was. And, you know, I got to train there for several years. And the thing about it, you know, like I was saying earlier, there's so many different systems there. Yeah. And uh, he would always bring in various masters from various other, you know, even, uh, I didn't know Africa had ma uh, martial arts. Mm. He, he would bring in uh, the folks from there and teach yeah. in that. So, yeah. you know, he was very open to everything. 
and it was it was great because you could train in Jun Fan, you can train in uh, Silat, shoot wrestling, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, uh, definitely Krubby Krobong he was teaching back then, mm -hmm. Thai boxing, yeah, um, and all this Western boxing. So he had everybody there. He's uh, you know definitely one of the greats, and, and also you know one of the most humble, soft-spoken people you'll ever meet. Um, I got a chance to be there for just a few months. I was, you know, a, uh, able to go there on like a Thursday morning and he actually taught the class and it was like you could go for once a week and I was like, well, if Goro Tan is actually teaching the class, that's a deal I can't pass up. So I was able to do it for about three months and, uh, you know, a lot of my friends train in the academy. You know, they're either former students or current mm -hmm. students and so many good people have uh, have come from good old Dan. I mean, I'm not just talking about good in their martial arts, but just good people, you know, and some of my, my best friends are still very, very connected to him. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, he'd stop the class and start mm -hmm. talking, and, and I, I would just be like, you know, and he could have talked for like the whole 90 minutes and I would have been mesmerized, you know, it's just, just amazing. And one of the things he said, he says, I think everybody should go out and learn at least five different martial arts, you know, and it was like, wow, you know, usually, from somebody up that high level, you know, there's, there's this very almost cult-like controlling um, attitude that a lot of instructors have where it's like, you know, no, no, don't, you know, you don't train anywhere well, else. He's incredibly humble, and I yeah. used to love it when uh, <clears throat> he would show, like, five disarms, or he had, like, say, uh, number one disarm mm -hmm. would come. So someone would feed an angle one, and he'd do, like, ten different disarms and uh, followed up by several sweeps. And I always remember he'd be like, everyone be looking at each other and you go, got it, got it, got it. Now, if you were crazy enough to go, he'd be like, good, demonstrate. So <laughs> you learn just to not move your head in there. Just yeah. keep it still because, yeah. <laughs> you know, because then you'd have to, and you might get through two or three, yeah. but he would just flow from one thing to the next and it was just incredible what he, what he could do. I, I, yeah, he's one of my heroes, you know, and I, I, I like him so much, I respect him so much, and uh, you know, I, I, I wish that I could have spent more time with him, but you know, just logistics and schedule and things like that, you know, but um, uh, I am really hoping that, you know, he will be one of, one of the guests on this show because, uh, and you know, we'll spend three hours probably talking and, you know, oh, yeah. uh, yeah, just talking about his days with Ark Wong and Ed Parker and, you know, the, the Filipino martial arts and, you know, and the Silad and everything else that, um, that he's delved into, and you know, he's still learning. He's still, he's still that student. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Like you were saying uh, just a minute ago, he, he would always say, well, go seek out other masters, go seek mm. out other instructors. He said, yeah. I don't have all the answers. Mm. You know, so he's, he's always expanding, mm. which, is, so, which is inspirational to all of us martial yeah. artists. I think we can't be closed off to, this is the only way. Mm. You know, there's many ways. You're teaching sort of a blend of um, Filipino martial arts, Silat, and Muay Thai. Um, do you have a favorite of those three, or do you like them all equally? Or, I mean, it's uh, kind of like your children, you know. It's like, well, yeah. how do I pick? <laughs> you know, it's like I love them all, you know. So it, it all depends on the situation. Yeah, okay. You know, it, it, if it's um, uh, just hands, you know, hands and no weapons involved, mm -hmm. I have to say uh, boxing and, and Muay Thai, mm -hmm. uh, and then any kind of weapon, I would I would just stick with the Filipino martial arts, mm. uh, sea lot mm. as well. Do you think that boxing and Muay Thai have become closer uh, in terms of um, the integration? You know, because uh, I think at some point many years ago, boxing and Muay Thai, you know, you could do Muay Thai, but then you'd have to miss, you know, like work on your boxing. But it seems like from what you've been showing me that boxing has become more integrated in terms of the way they use their hands and the way that they hold their hands. Is that accurate? Yeah. Um from what I was told uh, in the history of it, um, the Dutch were training a lot with the, with the Thai mm -hmm. over in Thailand, and the Dutch had boxing skills. Okay. And um, they started winning mm. uh, fights. And so the Thai uh, people naturally, like all martial arts are kind of evolving right now to kind of bringing in stuff from other systems because yeah. we yeah. have the inter internet now. We can see what's going on mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, everyone's taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And yeah. I think that the, the, the Western boxing goes, Hand in hand, <laughs> yeah, with the the Thai, yeah, uh, the Thai uh, Thai boxing. So it's a really nice blend, yeah. And uh, I just see it more and more prevalent, especially with the MMA too. Yeah, you know, they they'll be at one range and then they'll go right into boxing and they they just kind of change it all up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I you know I, I think that you know you, you know you have kickboxing, Muay Thai, um, wrestling, Jiu Jitsu, uh, boxing, and then maybe you know a karate style 
you know, like a Kyokushin or come from that kind of base. Um, and those are kind of almost like the pillars of, you know, uh, successful MMA training. You know? Correct. Because, you know, even if you are somebody like Lyoto Machida who comes from a Shotokan background, you know, we, you know, we as karate people like to cheer him on because, you know, one, he's a very nice guy. He's a great fighter, but he's very humble. But also it's like, yeah, karate, you know, yeah, see, karate works. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, it can help. But he hasn't just done karate. He's been cross training right. and, you know, he's been, you know, he's, he, he knows that, okay, this is the game that I'm going to play. So you have to train accordingly, you know? So that means that it's, yeah, you know, looking at, at all these other things, you know, maybe karate is still his base, you know, because he works with a great coach with Vinicio Antony who comes from Shodokan, you know, but he's also, you know, they, but they've all cross trained, you know, and they understand, right. you know, nutrition and, you know, and all this other, you know, uh, ring, uh, ringsmanship, you know, things like that. Um, but it, it's, it's a wonderful just how everything is just integrated. And, you know, I, th I think that early on you can get confused and, you know, but I think once you have a foundation, then, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to say, oh, check this out. You know, this is something that's, right. that's lacking. And the, and the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, karate is still my, my base art. However, oftentimes the traditionalists will look at my form and go, eh, you know, you've, you've changed things a little bit. And it's like, well, uh, not so much. I've just sort of, you know, th there are certain things that I see now that I didn't see before. And when I get to train with you in Muay Thai, you know, we're doing stuff like, you know, elbows that are coming this way and elbows that are coming this way. And I'm thinking, well, if the elbow is going this way and the elbow is coming back this way and then it extends down into a hammer, that looks an awful lot like my traditional down block. Exactly. You know? So now it's like elbow, elbow, hammer to the knee, and then all of a sudden, for me, it's like, oh, it's not just blocking a kick, it's actually got a lot of strikes in there. So I've actually found things in my art by going outside my art. They were already there, but um, I, you know, they had to be revealed to me in a different way. So right. I went, oh, I get it. You know? Well, there's only so many different ways the human body can move. Correct. So Correct. each system, depending on the, the, the topography of where it is, mm -hmm. you know, jungle climates, they're gonna have to adapt different techniques. Sure, sure. Uh, more open ground, different mm -hmm. techniques. Mm -hmm. So it all depends, and I think, again, uh, one day we'll probably everything will evolve to one art, mm. eventually. One big art, yeah, you know, everything. So who knows where it's all going, right? You know, right. but I, I like what's uh, what's happening now, because you know, back in the seventies, it was like you either you either done this or that or mm -hmm. this, or, you know, no one really cross trained, mm. and now everyone's doing like, you know, uh, blending things and mixing things, and mm. I think it's a good thing because, you know, only good could come from that. I think. Mm. Well, you know, I, I, I think that the elbows and knees work well for the films also. You know, they, they translate well with certain things. Um, you know, Chad Stahelski, you know, directed, you know, a bunch of stuff. But, you know, he's most well known for the John Wick movies. But I understand he comes from, you know, Guto Inosanto as mm -hmm. well. Uh, there's a gentleman named Sam Hargrave who d recently directed this film called Extraction with Chris Helmsworth, you know, um, Chris Hemsworth, you know, who was Thor. And man, you know, I mean, he's a martial artist too and a stunt guy and they're able to get in there and just, man, you know, you're just, you're starting to see action filmed in a different way. And it's not just the techniques they're using in terms of martial arts, but it's how they're shooting it. And they can know? show more with the type, type of cameras they have and the drones that we have and yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, certain systems lend themselves better to camera like Kung Fu and Karate and sure, sure. John Fan, I think. And mm -hmm. I think that like with all the, um, the Filipino martial arts are mm -hmm. coming on pretty strong, yeah. you know, uh, now. Um, so the, the thing is, is I think the grappling people are still trying to make it work for film because mm -hmm. it's a little more difficult to see what's going on. Yeah. Cause it's a, but I think it, you just make it a little bigger, just like mm -hmm. you do, you know, for the, with the martial arts, you, you know, a hook bomb, you have to make it much bigger so you, the camera doesn't read this empty air. Yeah. You want to fill the frame, yeah. so to speak. Well, they did a pretty good job of incorporating jujitsu into the John Wick films because okay. he does use it. Um, but, you know, he's not rolling around the ground with somebody. Right. But there are times when, you know, you see him go into the arm bar and he breaks it. You know, you see him go into the choke and, you know, but he's never stuck in one place, you know. But yeah. so I think they, they used it wisely in those films. And you're going, oh, yeah, I recognize that taking. That's really cool. And I can actually see what's going on. So, you know, obviously you modify it for the camera and it's more of a, you know, right. theatrical uh, presentation. It has to be it. bigger. Yeah. You know, it has to be, yeah. So, so it's, again, theatrical presentation. Yeah. 
of course. But, you know, real fight, it would be kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> like, Bink, what happened? I don't know. He's down. Yeah, <laughs> and it would be a very short movie. It would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, what is it that you want to, um, if this was like the last day that you got the chance to be with your students, what would you like to teach them and what, what would you like to leave with them? That's a good question. I, honestly, I would, I would want them to pass on the art to the next generation. Mm. You know, keep it going. Mm. Keep it pure, keep it like, it, you know, it's the whole spiritual aspect of it all. Okay. It's not just about hitting people. It's a way of life. It's a, it's a way of um, carrying yourself through life. Uh, putting other people, protecting people, protecting yourself, honor, you know, taking care of people. That's all, in, it, it's all included in the art itself. Mm -hmm. So I would say to, to, to pass it along to the next generation, that would be the, the one thing I'd like to, to see happen. Mm. Keep it going. You're working with some students that are dealing with extreme shyness and lack of confidence. Um, but sometimes even working with students like that for a short period of time, you can see a difference, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a slow process, mm. you know, and uh, they're just um, socially anxiety, you yeah. know, this kind of thing. Yeah. But it's like working through those issues. And it's like, you, you know, the shy person, they, 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 they want to get out there. They want to be that uh, bold person. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, it just takes, they have to get past themselves. Yeah. And I think martial arts has a way of building confidence. Yeah. And if you slowly build them up, then you know they don't even realize they went from here to here. Yeah. You know, and they're talking to people and they're interacting, and it's it's nice to see that happen because it's part of what we do. But you, you know, people be you want them to be better for knowing you. Yeah. And and to training within within the martial arts. Well, and and what I see you doing is that you know you are lifting up your students, not tearing them down, and and I've seen that before with abusive instructors. I've had abusive instructors where they're, you know, they, they, you better not be better than me or think you're better than me, you know, where I'm like, I want my students all to surpass me. I, you know, right. we want to bring them up. Yeah. But, you know, we've both dealt with, dealt with people, you know, in the movie industry as well as the martial arts where they're definitely compensating for a lack of something and they're constantly having to knock people down versus Hey, why don't you bring them up? And you know what? If they go up higher than you, then if you've, you know, trained them right, they will bring you up too. Right, and then know? again, the art survives to the next generation. Yes. Because it's just going to die out if you have a bunch of people that really don't want to elevate. Mm. They want to keep people down. Yeah. So that's really, I don't think that's what it's about. I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a wonderful time today. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Uh, a great session, and I look forward to many more. Um, again, you know, the beautiful art of Muay Thai, which I am very new at, and um, I hope to get decent at, you know. And, and I, I know that the only way to do that is just to keep working at it, right? Time and service, time and grade. <laughs> so That's all. I am willing to uh, really, really suck at something in order to someday be really, really good at it. It's just got to be willing to put the time in and be consistent. You Absolutely. Know? You gotta put the hard work in, right? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Phil. Once again, Phil Aslaxon. This is 52 Masters. I'm William Christopher Ford, and we'll see you next time.